Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we'll be discussing about enzymes again. So we'll just continue from the part we left in the previous video. So if you haven't watched my previous video, you may refer to the previous video so that you can get the reference clearly. So let's just get started with this video. So this was the point we left in the previous video. We talked about lock and key model about enzyme substrate kinetics so this is how it stands so we talked about the proximity effect as well as the orientation effect and about uh, interactions such as van der Waals forces hydrogen bonding so let's just get to, uh, on with this and get forward with this so let's just discuss some of the cofactors and coenzymes all right so cofactors as we know these include mainly metal ions which can be manganese magnesium iron and many more and coenzymes are certain sort of uh, coenzymes are certain enzymes so which can be such as nad fad or many others so we'll dis uh, discuss some of the cofactors and coenzymes such as for zinc uh, there are cofactors such as alcohol dehydrogenase under zinc uh, i mean uh, zinc uh, this thing zinc cofactor is present in alcohol dehydrogenase, carbonic anhydrase, carboxyl peptidase, magnesium co uh, cofactor is present in phosphory, phosphorohydrolases, phosphotransferases, manganese is present in arginases, phosphotransferases, and iron Fe2 and or Fe3 is present in cytochromes, peroxidase, uh, catalase, ferox uh, ferridoxins, copper is present in tyro tyrosinase, cytochrome oxidase, potassium is present in pyruvate kinase, and sodium is present in plasma membrane ATPase, also requires K plus and Mg2 plus. So I'm talking about coenzymes. All right, so coenzymes which are mainly NAD. So as you can see, nicotinamide, nicotinamide adenine, dinucleotide, and nicotinamide adenine, dinucleotide. So these two are same, which have an entity transfer of hydrogen atoms. All right, uh, so nicotinamide adenine, uh, dinucleotide phosphate. So talking about uh, F, uh, this is flavin mononucleotide, and this is FAD, uh, flavin adenine dinucleotide. These are coenzymes Q, thiamine, thiamine, pyrophosphate, coenzyme A, lipoamide, co cobamide enzymes, biocytin, pyridoxal phosphate, and tetrahydrofolate enzymes. So these are some of the entity transfers which takes place with these cofactors, all right? Which can be aldehyde, acyl, alkyl, carbo carbon dioxide, amino, group methyl, methyl, formyl, these are number of types uh, with the cofactors of these some of these enzymes and the coenzymes with the entity transfer so moving on so let's just discuss some of the enzyme kinetics which is the Michaelis mentin kinetics which is the most important part of enzyme so kinetics of simple uh, simple enzyme catalyzed reactions are often referred to as Michaelis mentin kinetics or saturation kinetics at high substrate concentration, all these sites may be occupied by substrates or the enzyme is saturated. So as you can see, this is a simple enzyme kinetic reaction. So when the enzyme gets attached to the active site of a substrate, it leads to the formation of product ES. All right. So this is the point where these enzymes and substrate gets attached, which leads to the formation of enzyme plus product. As you can see, as, you, as uh, I mentioned in my previous video, so and this is the Michaelis mentin uh, kinetics graph. So th this is the graph that relates to the Michaelis mentin. So as you can see, this is the uh, initial substrate concentration. As you can see, this is S is present. So this is the initial substrate concentration, uh, which gets converted, which gets slowly, slowly degraded. As you can see, so this reaches to a final point or the saturation point. So this point is the saturation V max. Vm is the V max point. This is the saturation point from there. This point gets lowered or where this is the point where uh, where the substrate of the uh, where the substrate gets degraded which leads to the formation of product. All right. So I'll be showing you a clear graph how the substrate gets degraded and the product uh, and the product gets upgraded in uh, in this video only so just remember these terms this is the v max which is the saturation point this is half half of v max 
So this is just the half of Vmax and this is the substrate. This is which is known as the Km. Km is a constant. This is the, this is the substrate. Uh, x-axis is covered by substrate and V is the velocity. So, so there is it. So as you can see in this graph, so these two are more or less the same. So this in, in this case, the substrate gets degraded after the previous graph. So as we saw in this previous graph, this was the case. And after this point, this thing gets this thing. Uh, this thing gets degraded, uh, just same as uh, same as this uh, in this case. So the substrate gets degraded, whereas the product gets upgraded or gets raised. And this is the uh, this is the point where the two mixes, where the two uh, substrate and the uh, enzyme combines together to form product. So this is a clear thing. So this is the enzyme or the substrate which gets degraded after a certain point of time after reaching the saturation point. And this is the product which gets upgraded with time. And this is the this is the point. This line is the point where the two enzyme and substrate mix will lead to the formation of product. So this is the graph that we are talking about. And this is the equation for Michaelis maintain. So this is the Vmax. And this is the Km is a constant. And this is the substrate. So this is something that you need to remember. V equals to Vm s by Km plus s. So this is the equation and this is the graph for Michaelis maintain as well. So Michaelis maintain graph I showed you before. This is not the Michaelis maintain graph. Pardon for that. But this is the exact graph shown for the entire enzyme substrate product. So three and Michaelis maintain as we know. This is the Michaelis maintain graph as you know. So this is the Michaelis maintain graph. This is the Vmax. This is uh, probably the, this is the half of Vmax. This is a half of Vmax, and this is the substrate. This probably comes down from here, not from here. And this is half of Vmax. This is uh, Vmax, which is the saturation point. This is half of Vmax. This is the substrate. This is the velocity. All right. And this is the entire graph. This is this graph contains everything, which is the substrate goes down, product comes up with time, and uh, product of cups this time. This is the product one. This is the substrate one, and this is the uh, the two enzyme and substrate getting combined together to form product. Moving on with this, so there are some other models also. So we have three other models. So the first one is uh, line weaver work model. I, you may have heard about this uh, about the line weaver work model. So this is how we represent our line weaver work model. This is represented by 1 by V equals to 1 by Vm plus Km by Vm 1 by S. So this is represented as in this graph as you can see. So this is the uh, this x axis, the positive x axis is represented by 1 by substrate and the negative part is represented as minus 1 by Km. All right. And the uh, y axis is represented by 1 by V. So line weaver is the reciprocal plot. OK, which is which can be also set as a double reciprocal plot. So x, y, x, y axis both are in reciprocals. All right. And a line gets uh, uh, this line. The line weaver work is represented as this. Like the line starts from the negative part of uh, x axis and ends in the positive part. And this part, this is the uh, this is the intercept part. This is the y intercept part, as you can see. So the y intercept is uh, 1 by Vm. Whereas the slope is km by vm. All right. So this is the y-intercept part, and this is the slope for line weaver work model. So let's come to the model, which is the eddy hofstede plot. So talk about, talking about eddy hofstede plot. So this is how it, uh, it is represented. V equals to vm minus km uh, v by s. So this is not a reciprocal plot. This is a normal plot. In this, uh, v is the velocity for y-axis, and x-axis is represented as v by s. And in this, uh, the slope is minus km. The slope is represented as minus km. So this is how we represent the ad half c plot. So this is how it's done. And the, as you know, the slope is minus km in this, and the intercept is km here. As you can see, the intercept is km, whereas the slope is minus km. Uh, so the intercept is vm, sorry, the vm slope is km. So moving on with the another, which is the Hans-Wolf plot. 
So coming to the handsome plot, this is also a reciprocal for party reciprocal, not a double reciprocal as per line weaver. So in this case, this is represented as this, which uh, refers to this plot as you can see. So in this, the x-axis is uh, substrate by velocity and the y-axis, uh, sorry, the y-axis is s by substrate by velocity, whereas the x-axis is substrate only. So it starts from the negative x-axis, all right? And in this, the slope is 1 by Vm, as which corresponds to the equation. And in this, the y-intercept is Km by Vm, okay? It starts from minus Km, and the intercept is Km by Vm, whereas the slope is 1 by Vm. So this was about all three plots, and I'll just leave you with a slide which contains a numerical for your doubts. So I have left with uh, left you all with the two numericals for this uh, chapter for the part which I taught you. These are very simple numericals if you apply the plot. As you can see, this is a line deeper work plot, and this is a simple Michaelis maintain equation. So you may try solving these two questions. Uh, if you have any doubts solving these questions, you may write in the comment section. I'll help you out with the solutions. So let's just keep this video till here and stay tuned for more and thank you for watching it.